Thank you for being here. I'd like to welcome you to Florida Memorial University. I believe I saw uh, Dr. Babson. Are you here in the audience, Dr. Babson? It's hard to see into the audience because it's dark. Is Dr. Babson here? No. I guess not. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, how many of you have been here before?
technique to use to change a little bit the sound and the things that you want to accomplish in this kind of music is just to ask them to sing it like I did earlier on new. From what I'm trying to develop, especially in the sopranos and, and the altos, and also the tenors and the, and the basses, is what we call head voice. What is head voice? Woo! That's head voice. What is chest voice? Uh, that is chest voice. Okay. And many times we try to sing with our chest voice, we try to take it up high, so that's when we start singing a little bit loud, too loud, okay, and, and not quite in tune, and all kinds of stuff happens. But I'm trying to develop with them a little bit more the head voice. Ooh. The altos can have head voice down below. Doesn't have to be. Uh, we need those sounds sometimes, but not now. So just to give you a little taste of how it truly really should sound when it's all working well. Uh, let's do it a little bit on new and listen to this sound. The one thing I'm trying to teach them, just to remind themselves, is something very simple. When we speak, there's an E sound and there's an A sound, and our lips go up, they're white, E and A. R, O, different shape, R, O, E, A. So, in a simple way that I have to try to get them to sound uniform, it's just to remind them to keep the same shape of the lips. E, E, A, O, U. So yeah, right there. If they don't remember, one simple thing to ask them is just to put their hands to the face like this, and then they have no choice. They have to have their mouth in the way. Okay? So. Yeah. <laughs>